Welcome back guys. If like me, you like to photograph people and then edit those photos, this video is for you. You probably already know that Luminar AI is a really good photo editor, but because it has so many dedicated portrait editing tools, that's one of the areas where it really shines. Luminar's latest update 1.4 has brought to us another incredible AI tool. The Bokeh AI tool automatically masks the people in our portrait and then we can control the blurriness, the bokeh, in the background of that photo. We can also control other things as well, such as the brightness, the color tint, all sorts of stuff. And I briefly covered it in another video, link in the description. But in this one, I just wanna go a little bit deeper into that particular tool and make some suggestions about how you can actually use that tool a little bit more creatively than just blurring the background. I'm going to be working on this photo and I'm also going to go through every single portrait editing tool and just show you which ones I like to use, which ones are really good, which ones not so much and despite their good intentions I think there's a couple in there that also kind of stink. Those of you who follow my channel will know I'm also a big advocate for Adobe products, Photoshop, Lightroom, I really love them. But a lot of people don't like Adobe's subscription model so what I think you get inside of Luminar AI for just over a hundred bucks is insane value. If you guys don't have it yet and you want to help support me keep producing free training I've got a link in the description below I'd really appreciate it if you'd use that because I get a very small commission from Skylum and to make it worthwhile for you guys I've also got a discount code which will save you some money at the checkout so go ahead and use that if you don't have it already righto let's take a look at what these portrait editing tools can do a great place to start for a lot of users is within the template section because Luminar AI makes suggestions for us that in just one click we can actually completely transform and edit our photo so for example, with one click, we've done a full edit on this shot already. But I don't like the idea of letting Luminar AI make decisions for me. I prefer to be in control of my edit myself. So what we can do is come to the bottom right here and reset the adjustments. Or alternatively, if we want to, we could come into the editing section here. And within the history panel, we can just go straight back to our original image. Right, let's jump into the editing tools here. And you guys who follow my work will know that I love this Enhance AI tool. We can just grab the Accent AI slider up and just like that, we've enhanced our photo with that one slider. Let's look at our before and our after. So if you don't know anything about photo editing, this tool is an absolute godsend. I often find that 100% of any of these tools, because they're so powerful, is just a little bit too much. So I'm just gonna bring that back down to just dial in a quarter of that amount. You can see that we've got so many different tools available to us and they're all super easy to use. They're all slider based. But as I mentioned in the intro, it is really great value. If I just jump into this light section here, we've pretty much got access to all the fundamental photo editing tools that are at the very heart of Lightroom's processing engine. So we can make all sorts of modifications here, but because I want to get going with the portrait editing tools, in this case, I'm just gonna bump the smart contrast up. And straight away, if we look at our before, and our after, just by clicking on the eyeball tool up here, before, after, we're in a much better place to start editing already. And we've achieved that look just with two sliders. Right, let's scroll down here to the portrait section. And I'm really excited to show you this portrait bokeh AI tool. Look at this, I'm gonna just gonna grab the slider and crank it all the way to 100. And if I toggle this off, and then toggle it on. You can see that we've blurred the background. And what I think is really impressive, if I bring my mouse over and onto the picture, Luminar AI's AI has created for us pretty much a perfect mask around our model. But if it doesn't get it quite right, which is understandable because this is a very complex mask, which is being generated automatically by the AI, we can give it a helping hand. We can come over to the brush controls here and if we get in an area that's being blurred that shouldn't be, we can come over and we can paint the mask in there. Conversely, what we can do is actually remove areas of the mask. So for example, we can get the defocus brush, we can come here and we can use the bracket keys on the keyboard just to control the size and we can just remove that there and, and as you would have seen, all of a sudden that just blurred that area. While being able to blur our backgrounds through software is just absolutely mind blowing and really cool, there is a lot more to this tool. And as I said, I covered it in a previous video, so I'll put a link to that in the description. But today I'll show you a slightly different approach. One of the things that I really love is the fact that we can actually drop the brightness down of the background. So basically we're utilizing the fact that we already have a pretty much perfect mask of our model here. And now we can further separate her by reducing the brightness of the background. And a more creative use for this might 
it be actually changing the color balance. You'll notice that our gorgeous model Sammy here, she's got some blue dungarees on and a yellow t-shirt. And the background's made up of a pretty much neutral gray and then the brown of this wood here. So let's suppose we want to harmonize the colors in the photo. Well, we could use this slider to help us do that. So if I take the warmth down to the left, just like that, I've added blue to the background, which harmonizes with her dungarees. So that's pretty cool. If we take it the other way, I've been able to introduce yellow tones into the background, which now harmonizes much better with her t-shirt. The sliders I haven't looked at here, highlights glow. If you do have little highlight areas and you increase that, you get a lovely glow off them. The depth correction just allows you to bring the blur closer to the subject or take it further away. And if you want to refine your mask, you can use the edge correction slider and if you take it to the right, it's just gonna tighten that mask up a little closer around the model. I'm going to keep the depth correction set to zero and I'll just drop the amount down just a little bit. Okay, we have four more categories to look at here, but one that I feel doesn't really fit into the portrait section is the high key filter. I think this makes more sense if it was to live within the creative section. I'll crank it up so you can see what it actually does, but personally, I don't think this is portrait specific. I think it's a valid choice to utilize high key for other genres of photography, and I regularly do as well. So I'm just gonna leave that alone for now, and we're gonna jump into the Face AI. Now there's some really clever stuff going on here. So face light allows us to actually brighten up the model's face. If I push it all the way to the right, you'll see exactly what it's doing. As always, I'm like very cautious about taking things too far, but just adding a little bit of this subtly into portraits can actually really help enhance your work. One of the things that I really love about Luminar AI is just how easy it makes it for you to make changes and edit your photos. If I wanted to brighten the face up in other photo editing software, I would actually have to be making the mask to let the photo editing software know where the face is. But because Luminar's AI has already identified exactly where the face is, it knows where the body is, where the eyes are, all of this stuff, it's just a time saver. It's about making your editing more efficient. So the AI isn't making creative decisions for you, it's just enabling you to reach your creative vision faster. Now I mentioned that there are some tools that I think you should leave alone and this slim face feature is one of those but let me just put a little bit of that in so you can see what it does. It's just thinned our model's face out a little bit and this feature may be useful to you if you have a subject who's particularly weight conscious and they actively say to you can you slim me down. Actually from my experience more than likely people will say can you photoshop me? Who knows in years to come maybe they'll say can you luminar me? Anyway, this is a demonstration of the tools only. So from that point of view, I'm just gonna leave a little bit of that in. Okay, below this, we have sections for enhancing the eyes and the mouth. So let's start with the eyes. Let's zoom into the photo so we can see a little better what we're doing. You know what, I just can't do it. I'm not gonna slim her face down. She's a beautiful young lady and I really don't want to be messing with her anatomical geometry. We're gonna leave her exactly as she is. But let's see what we can do with the eyes section. Currently these are her original eyes, but if you wanted to, we can come in and play with the color of her eyes. For me, I don't find that option particularly useful, but you may have a purpose for it. We can enlarge the eyes if we want to. If you go too strong with any of these effects, things start to look pretty weird pretty quick. You know, she's a human being, not a manga character. So I'm gonna bring that back down, but let's suppose your subject's eyes are a little more closed than you would have liked. You can use the enlarge eyes filter judiciously, just use it with caution, just to open them up just a little bit. If we want to bring attention to the eyes, we can bring the eye whitening filter up slightly. And the next slider, Eye Enhancer, is probably my favorite in this whole section. The reason is it's actually working on her original eyes, her actual eyes. So let me grab this slider and push it to the right. And there you can see we haven't actually changed her eyes in any way, we've just enhanced what's already there. So if I toggle our changes off and then put them on again, you can see that the eyes have got a lot more pop going on. Red eye removal works. If you've photographed your subject with a flash on top of the camera, please don't do that. But the light will reflect off the back of their eyeball and bounce back through, look red, they'll look like they've got demon eyes. Anyway, the red eye removal slider will take care of that. If like me at the moment, your subject hasn't had much sleep, uh, you can grab the dark circles removal slider and it's just going to brighten up underneath your subject's eyes. Sammy doesn't really need this, so we'll bring it back down, but we'll leave a little bit in just for demonstration purposes. Now this last slider is called Improve Eyebrows and I kind of find that name a little bit laughable. Let me push that all the way to 100 and you might get to see why. Personally, I think a better name would be Darken Eyebrows because whether or not that is an improvement is a matter of opinion. 
and in my opinion it is not so I'm just going to bring this back down again demonstration purposes we'll just leave a little bit in in the mouth section everything's pretty much self-explanatory we can saturate the lips and obviously make the reds slightly more red we can grab the lip saturation and just bump that up so the color that exists in the lips is actually being increased and if we want the color to be a red and increase that we can push the lip redness up as well if the lips need darkening we can grab that slider and just darken the lips down a little bit. Sammy obviously doesn't drink the amount of coffee that I do because her teeth are beautifully white, but let's suppose your subject needs their teeth whitening a little bit, you can grab that slider and put that into the amount that you feel is appropriate. Okay, that is face AI. Let's move on to skin AI. We don't have nearly as many options available to us here, but it doesn't matter because what we do have is this amount slider and I'll push that to 100 and just like that, we've got a softening effect on the skin. And as I toggle this off and on, you'll be able to see exactly what that filter's doing. If you like the effect, but you don't want it 100%, that's fine. We can just bring that down to a point where we feel happy. And just like with any of Luminar's tools, if you want further control, every tool comes with a mask. So we can click that and then erase the effect from where we don't want it. The skin defects removal tool is fantastic some of the time. Um, I'm going to turn this on and you can see that it hasn't actually made any change at all, which is a real shame. But here's the thing, if this wasn't an environmental portrait where we can see her full body and a lot of surroundings as well, when your subject's face is bigger in the frame, I've found that this skin defect removal tool does a much better job. But if, as in this case, it hasn't worked, what you can do is come down to the clone tool down here takes us back to our original photo. If you're not familiar with how a clone tool works, it's really straightforward. Basically, you're borrowing pixels from one part of an image and then painting them over another. So as a crude example, let me say, I'm gonna sample from her eye here and we're going to paint a third eye up on her forehead. <laughs> there you go. Now you can see how the tool works. I've pressed Control Z and I'll show you a more useful application. What I'd like to do is just reduce the opacity down to about, I don't know, 50%. Then we'll sample from her skin where it's more smooth and I'll just paint over that little mark there and there you go, it's gone. Sammy's got a little vein running here so what I'm going to do is just sample from the side of it and just run a line up along that and that's just going to soften that area down and you can keep going with this. Sample from one place, paint over another. Sample from one place, paint over another. She's got a little something something up in her hair right here so we could just click below there use the left bracket key just to reduce the size of that and click a couple of times and that little mark's gone too. So if you want to take more control over the retouch of a portrait, the option is there and the clone tool is a really useful tool for doing that. Right, let's jump back into the portrait tools. Now we're gonna have a look at body AI. And once you click on a different tool and move away from the clone, that cloning gets applied and Luminar AI reapplies all of these changes that we've made so far. When you jump back from the original photo to where we are now, you can see that I've totally gone over the top with this edit and I would strongly recommend, especially when you're working on portraits, this is somebody's face, you don't wanna to go too far. You don't wanna make them look like their eyes are glowing like I have here. So although I've been really heavy handed for demonstration purposes, I'm actually just gonna come back in and bring some of these sliders back down just so we have a little bit more of a natural look. Her teeth were already very white, so I'll bring that down as well. Okay, let's close this down. Come up to our zoom tool and choose fit to screen. And I'm going to leave it there. I'm not going to add any more of Luminar's creative tools or anything, but you can see, for example, we could add a vignette and darken down the edges. And another thing that I really like about Luminar is the software developers have obviously given the tools a lot of thought. Most vignette tools in other photo editors will apply that darkening effect evenly to all corners. But with Luminar, we can come in, click choose subject, and we can click straight on our model. And now she's still the brightest part and we've got that darkening effect going on around her rather than the center of the frame. Now, even though I've overbaked this one on purpose to show you guys what those tools do, I'm the first to hold my hands up and say I'm guilty of over-processing my photos regularly, but Luminar AI has a great feature which has saved me on many occasions and hopefully it can save you too. If we come down to the bottom right here, we've got a slider which is our overall amount slider. On the far left, we have our original version of the photo. Far right, everything applied with 100%. So rather than looking at our before, and our after and saying, oh, we've really overbaked that. 
and having to come in individually to each tool and reduce their amount, we can just come down to this overall amount slider and start to ease that back to a place where we feel happy with it. So this is nothing, this is 100%. And so somewhere in between the two is that sweet spot, that little Goldilocks place where everything's just right. Let's put that amount there just over halfway. And now let's have another look at our before and after. Before, after, and another really cool thing with Luminar that I love to do is just do this, just grab this slider and look at our before and after that way. And let's zoom in on our model and have a look at our face. Here's our before, let's slide that across. Here's our after. Before, after, considering we've been able to do all of that with sliders and with a piece of software that's barely over $100, I just think that is absolutely brilliant. I'm so sorry I nearly missed one of the tools. Come back down here, look at Body AI here. Now it's possible that I subconsciously overlooked this one because I'll be honest, I'm really not a fan of Body AI. But this video is a demonstration of the software not really a discussion around the ethics of body sculpting, but let's suppose you do want to alter the shape of your model. We can get this slider, this shape slider, and if you take it to the left, you're gonna enlarge their size, and if you take it to the right, you're going to slim them down. We also have the option to grab this abdomen slider, and that can just give our model a little tummy tuck if that's what you want to do. Again, I'm not really a massive fan of this, but there you go. There is a complete overview of all the portrait editing tools inside of Luminar AI. I really hope this has been helpful to you guys. If you've got any comments or questions, please leave them below. And if you've enjoyed the video or found it helpful, give me a thumbs up. And if photo editing and photography is your thing, why don't you go ahead and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.